this, this. I said, okay. At least you save your life if you think so. But he said he was very skeptical. He was not, you know, and according to him, that the wife came to this church, came and met me, and I prayed for her, according to him, that the wife went the next day, when she got home, the bleeding stopped. <laughs> Hallelujah. That problem, God took care of it. And then, and, and, and he would quickly ask her, how much did they charge you? And she said, no, they didn't charge anything. He was anxious to see that type of church. And so when he came down, he said he came here 2009, late 2009, he said, he was here, he said he was in this church for six months straight. He said he did not hear the pastor talk about money. Then, and then above that, he was hearing things for the first time. He could see a man that will stand and look at you on the face and tell you the truth. Hey. Hallelujah. That was what he needed. And he started coming to church. He then got serious with God. And now he is more a man of faith than me now. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Confirmation as a seal. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A seal of your faith. Let me explain it. And whenever I, I, I teach things of salvation, I like to break it down. See, what I'm telling you is not written in any book. It's my understanding. So when I'm preaching like this, you can go deeper than me. You see? Because, you know, it's from faith to faith. If I drop on one point, you can carry on deeper. On the same line of thought. And the light becomes brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then somebody... Now, now, now let's look at marriage. Because... What is actually going on between Christ and the church is a marriage. It's a marriage. Now, there are three last stages or three stages that are important to look at in a marriage. Number one, after you have convinced the girl by wooing her, what happens? She accepts to marry you. She accepts to marry you. When she has married you, when she agrees, then on the basis of her agreement, you pay the dowry, you pay the bride price. And then you come together and then a man of God pronounce you husband and wife. For agreeing to marry him, he gives you a wedding ring. That wedding ring that you wear is a seal of the vow that you have exchanged. From that day, any man that sees that wedding ring knows that you belong somewhere. You belong to someone. That is what the wedding ring is. It is a seal. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where the ring is not given before the exchange of vow. The wedding ring is given after the exchange of vow. Apostle Paul made reference. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. He made reference to Abraham. Romans chapter 4. If you are with me, I will read just uh, from verse 9. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Let me read it from verse 1 so that we truly catch this picture because Apostle Paul was very deep in his understanding of salvation. Verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh has found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof to glory, but not before God. 
For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that walketh is the reward, not record of grace, but of debt. But to him that walketh not, but believeth on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Let me read on. Commit this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also for we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision. Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. I will explain it. And he received the sign of circumcision. He received the sign of circumcision. A seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised. I will explain. That he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised. The righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. What is he saying here? Let me break it down. Abraham, listen, was told by God, we know his story, that he should come out from among his people. Please, this is very interesting. Come out of his people. He had to say the Lord. God appeared to him. He was not the God of his fathers. He had never known him before. But a spirit appeared to him and told him that he is God. Come out from among your people and I will take you to a land that I will give you and your seed after you. Hearing that alone, not knowing where he was going. Where are you going? Abraham, hearing that alone, he packed all his belongings and left his father's place and began a journey. Where are you going, Abraham? God said. And the Bible said, because he believed, the action of him believing and going out, he responded to that. Hallelujah. It was counted to him for righteousness. Now, Apostle Paul is arguing with the Jews. Because the Jews are trying to make it look some big deal because they circumcise. Then he was saying that when Abraham, his faith, that was counted because the Jews were believing in the works of the flesh. The works of the flesh. Apostle Paul is telling them, when was Abraham's faith confirmed? When was he accepted for righteousness? Was it before or after circumcision? It was before circumcision that Abraham's faith was accepted for righteousness. He believed God. Now they watch it. He believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. My Pentecostal brethren, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, Concerning Jesus Christ, you've been saved. Abraham believed. That is what Apostle Paul is saying there. He believed. Do you believe the message? Can I see your hand? How many people believe this message we are preaching? How many people believe the gospel? How many people believe it? Thank you. You are not sure. If you are sure, you should be proud to lift up your hand and let everybody see it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. God bless you. Put down your hand. You believe. Hallelujah. That's why you left the world. That's why you're not in a mosque today. 
That's why you are not in a shrine now. That's why you are here in the church now. That's why you pray in the name of Jesus. You believe. The Bible says, Abraham also believed and it was counted to him for righteousness. And your belief is also counted to you for righteousness. Yes. But something happened after he believed. There was something that God did on him to confirm the faith he had to follow him. What did he do? Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. Hallelujah. Verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. And kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. And thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generation. This is my covenant. Which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. That is the confirmation of that covenant. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. At the age of 99, a man is to cut off, circumcise himself at the age of 99. You sure know it's not going to be easy. You see? He believed and it was counted to him for righteousness. But what of the confirmation? There has to be a confirmation. Praise the Lord. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. And it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. It will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. The man gives his wife a wedding ring. It's a seal of the covenant between him and you. If he say, I do marry again, you go come out the ring, give him back. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money or any stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people he has broken my covenant that's what apostle paul is referring to to the jews praise the lord it is a seal of a covenant that exists between abraham and god it is a seal of his faith there's something he believed. He believed God. God spoke to him. He believed. And because he believed, God did something to him to confirm the covenant. That was a confirmation for Abraham. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, Grieve not the Holy Ghost. Whereby ye are sealed until when? The day of redemption. So, what is
is the seal of a Christian? What is the seal? The confirmation of your faith is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Church, never you lose this. You are not a Christian until you have received the seal of the Holy Ghost. You are not a Christian. Church. Oh, glory be to God. This is a doctrine that not too many Christians understand. Everybody wants to go to heaven. But the steps you are to take to qualify you to go to heaven, they don't know it. The steps that they are supposed to to take the people are supposed to take to go to heaven they don't know it church after you have given your life to Christ like Abraham what did Abraham do God told him come out he came out it was counted to him for righteousness but there was something that was done to confirm that faith Grieve not the Holy Ghost, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Ephesians, go to Ephesians. We will read them. Let's read these scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Verse in whom you also trusted after that you had the word of truth after you have had the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after that you believed after that you believed you were sealed with that holy spirit of promise when were you sealed? After that you have believed the gospel of your salvation. You are sealed with that holy promise, spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Second Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 see the way he put it now he which established us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God who has also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirit in our because Romans chapter 2 verse 28 and verse 29 tells us circumcision now is no longer of the flesh circumcision is where? of the heart you are now a Jew not in the flesh you are now a Jew hallelujah spiritual Jew not a physical Jew praise the Lord like Abraham in Acts chapter 5 verse 32 he says that the Holy Spirit is given to them that obey. Who is the Holy Spirit given to? In Acts chapter 5 and verse 32. It's given to them that obey. Obey what? Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me. To obey is to come to him. Abraham obeyed and it was counted to him for righteousness. Come to me, Matthew eleven twenty-eight. All ye that labor and heavy laden with your sins and unbelief, the effect of unbelief. Come to me, and what will happen? I will give you rest. 
when you come to Christ, you have obeyed. But church, the problem with us is that some of us, when you say Christ, come to Christ, you think it is a journey with leg. It is not a journey with leg. That's why some people come and Christ cannot receive them because the truth is they did not come the way they are supposed to come the right way. You are, it's a journey of the heart. When you come to the altar, Christ stands there. Ah, the preacher is looking at your face. He may even be seeing you shedding tears. But God is looking at your heart. God told that sister Nena. He said, I am revealing myself to you because you have a heart to receive me. That's why he's interested in. It's the heart. It's the heart. There are some other sisters that no matter how Jesus appeared to them, they will still argue with Jesus standing before them and tell him, it doesn't matter. You are too hard. It's grace. Jesus is grace. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> it's given, the Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. Obey him. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. See, there's a statement in Acts chapter 2. Let's open Acts chapter 2. On the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. We close very shortly. Verse 36. That first sermon on the day of Pentecost. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly, Peter was speaking, that God has made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they had this, they were pricked. We are where were they pricked? They were pricked in their heart. Hallelujah. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall be confirmed. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So, so how are you supposed to be confirmed now? One, you must first repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is evidence that you believe what Jesus Christ did on the cross on Calvary for you. When you do that, it is after that you are confirmed. The confirmation here is not by anybody sprinkling holy water on you and a bishop going around and touching you and pouring oil on you saying now you are confirmed. I confirm you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. I confirm you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You are confirmed, confirmed, confirmed. No man can confirm anybody. No human being can confirm anybody. This is the process. Touch it. Then you understand. That is why. See, when you stand before every Bible teacher in the end time message. Hallelujah. Including those, the prophets. I've told you this several times. I say, anytime anybody come for to be prayed for by the prophets, I will first call the prophets if that person is from an end time message church a follower of the minister of William Brown I will tell them first I say listen you know, this person who I want to pray for now message believer oh. because as he they sit down before you he's not from a Pentecostal church oh. as you they sit down you they tell and thus said the Lord if they follow you everything you are saying he's bringing it to the Bible he's bringing it to the Bible if you say one thing contrary to the Bible, he will switch off. He will switch off. He has 
three children, you say you have two children, he will switch off. Any other thing you are telling him, even if you call his name later on, he will tell you if it is God talking to you. God cannot make a mistake. That is how William Brown brought us up. But okay, I also know that you can grow in the gift. Because you can say something and give a wrong interpretation of what you are saying. That's why we, we allow so many things and expect people to grow up later on. But church, when that sister or anybody else stand before me and you are giving me a revelation that you saw, I am listening to you to confirm if it was God that gave you that revelation or oh, the malaria dream you get. Or you ate beans before you slept. They say, well, you jump beans and a bar, chop. Your spirit will be troubled till you wake up. Or a demon is talking to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why I believe that it was the Lord that spoke to Sister Nena that baptism. Because the seal of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. She first she repented. She was told before she came to this church you have to drop those things she believed the prophecy and dropped them a young girl like that so god was seeing her heart and they went further she was now told to go for water baptism on tuesday in bride assembly she came here she heard the preacher evangelist ik tell you except you are baptized you will never never enter the kingdom. That is why she had because she does not know Bible though she is an added Catholic. If she had known the Bible she would have known that John chapter 3 verse 5 says except ye be baptized with water and of the spirit and of water you cannot enter the kingdom. Except your sins are remitted you can't enter the kingdom. And how many of you are in churches today? For years you are serving that you have not been baptized. And you are hoping to enter. How will you enter? When your sins have not been remitted. Repent. You have repented. That's why you are going to church now. Have you been baptized? Correct baptism. Not according to the letter. But the interpretation of that command. Have you been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost? That name is which name? Jesus. Say it if you know it. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, that name Jesus is the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. For the remission of your sins you have obeyed. And he will seal that faith that made you to repent and enter that water and come out. He will seal that faith with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is the confirmation. That is the confirmation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 30 says, For whom he did predestinate, for whom he had predestinated, them he called. And those whom he called, them he justified through water baptism and those he justified they are those he glorified the baptism of the Holy Ghost the seal the seal of your faith the seal of your obedience to come to come that is the seal everybody is going to church but how many of them have received confirmation of their faith? Those 120, they were in the upper room. They walked with Jesus Christ for three and a half years. Disciples of Jesus Christ. He called them personally one by one. He started with 12. By the time he died and resurrected, he was able to get up to 120 converts. They waited in the upper. Why did they need to wait again? They have worked with him. So it's not enough. 
that you see vision. It's not enough that every time you pray, he answers. Eh? I think you hear me. I think you hear me. Eh? Anytime you pray, did he answer you? No. Eh? Yes. No. Yes. They sleep. Praise the Lord. How can he answer you when you are sleeping? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not enough for a church. It's not enough for. It's not enough. See, there is a scripture. There is a story in the Bible. Saul. Ah, Saul, the king of Israel. Prophets gathered and they were praying and prophesying. Saul the king entered the room, anointing part King Saul, and he fell down there and began to prophesy. And they began to say, Is Saul also among the prophets? Hey, amen. Church, it's not enough for uh, anytime you come to church, you fall under anointing. Hey, salvation is more than falling down under anointing. Oh. Salvation is more than seeing vision. Oh. Salvation is more than hearing a voice. Oh. Salvation is deeper than that. One hundred and twenty. Every day that we are with Jesus, twelve of them walk with Him for three and a half years. Every day they were sleeping with him, waking up with him, eating with him like you do too every day, some of you. Yet, they had not been sealed. He told them, wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. Hallelujah. And on the day of Pentecost, suddenly, oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. The Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rushing wind and filled the whole room and dumped it like a tongue of fire. Came upon every head and then we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me finish that scripture. Hallelujah. Verse 39. For the promise is unto you, the Jews, and to your children, the Jews, and to all that are far off, you and me today, even as many as the Lord your God shall call. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word. We are baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls, not church members. So, three thousand souls, not three thousand members. I hope you know there's a difference between a soul and a member. Church, this is right assembly, you know better. He said, Three thousand souls. See, you can be a member of a church and you may not be a member of the body of Jesus Christ. And so many people are struggling to be recognized by the pastor of their church and they don't care whether Jesus Christ recognizes them or not. And there are people sitting down in the church there that the pastor does not recognize them but Jesus Christ recognizes them. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the truth. That is the truth struggling to be recognized in the church and when you don't recognize them they get angry and maybe even leave the church but there are people that are sitting down there and having wonderful fellowship with the Holy Ghost and yet nobody knows them oh blessed be the name of the Lord hallelujah hallelujah John chapter 1 verse 12, 11 and 12 he came to his own. His own received him not. But as many as received him, to them.
them, if you receive him, you believe. To them gave he power to become what? The sons of God. What is it that qualifies you? To them, he does something to make them to come into the family of God. How? How does he do it? It's by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 13. He said, for by one spirit are you baptized into Christ. By one spirit are you baptized into Christ. By one spirit. By one spirit. You are into, into the body. By one spirit are you baptized into the body. One body of Christ. For you to become a member, it is by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That is the new birth. Are you born again? It means have you been baptized with the Holy Ghost? That is the meaning. Ask your neighbor, are you born again? Ask him. Ask him now. Ask him. Ask him now. Ask him. Answer him. Answer him. Answer him. Answer him. Are you born again? Are you born again? There is a way. That scripture put it. Let me read John chapter 1. Let me read that, that John chapter 1 again. Verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now verse 13 is my emphasis. Which we are born. Not of their papa and their mama. Not of blood. You are not born of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Your papa decided that I want a son. They met with your mother and produced you. Eh, 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 eh. Nor of the will of man. That is a man say, you want to be born again? Stand up. Do you want to be born again? Stand up. Say after me. That is the will of man. But you are born of who? Of God. Born of God. is an action from above. That is a response, an action from above that is a response to your heart. God sees your heart. Oh, this one truly has decided to repent. He has decided to repent, but he still has a weakness in him. But he decided to repent. That's what God is looking at. That's what God is looking at. Your heart. Oh, anytime that weakness comes, he will fall. When he falls, he stands up his crying. Why this? Why that? God knows which one is crocodile tears and which one is a tear from a pained heart. Then he sees that heart. The opportunity he has. Then he gives you the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? That is the meaning of grace. God of creation. Knowing that no man has the ability to live a life of holiness. As long as we are in this flesh and that is the last victory to be won. When corruption this body shall put on incorruption. When mortality shall put on immortality. First Corinthians chapter 15. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When this earthly tabernacle could be dissolved. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. He said we have another one. As long as this body, this body here, you are in this body, you can never live a life of holiness. He gave the Lord. The Lord was condemning them every day. No man, even Moses, felt by the reason of anger. Moses, what do you call it? David, felt because of fornication. You see? Samson failed because of one beautiful woman. Hallelujah. Every one of us, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No human being, therefore, he said, he sent Jesus Christ. He sent him. Who shall believe our report? Isaiah 53, verse 1. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord.
praise the Lord. The arm of the Lord is John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave straight for his hand and he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He came to his own, John chapter 1. And his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. To become what? The son of God. He gave power. He shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Which power? The power of transformation that can turn a sinner to a saint. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the power that will make you a child of God. A son of God. That is a confirmation. He cannot waste that power. He cannot waste that confirmation. He will look at your heart first. Is he serious? Should I help him to live a life pleasing before me? Is his heart open? He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open, he will enter. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. That is the true confirmation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. That is the confirmation. How many want to be confirmed? Into the kingdom. Before you put up your heart. And your hand. Open your heart first. Open your heart first. See. How will you. How, how will you feel. That you had all this explanation. Concerning the mystery of salvation. In bride assembly. And you still don't make it. There are people almost everywhere whose hearts are all aflame with the fire that fell on Pentecost, which cleansed and let them clean. It is burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to His name! I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I am one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. I am one of them. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I want to read is for ministers. The last scripture I want to read is for ministers. The evidence of a true ministry. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Ministers all over the world, listen to me. Apostle Paul was posted. 
concerning his ministry. This is what he told the Corinthian church. Hallelujah. From verse 1. Do we begin again to commend ourselves or need we as some others epistles of commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Now verse 2 is my emphasis to the church. Ye are our epistle written in our hearts known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us written not with ink but with the spirit of the living God not in tables of stone like Moses had but in fleshy tables of the heart what is Apostle Paul saying 1 Corinthians chapter 9 1 Corinthians chapter 9 one verse there verse 2 if I be not an apostle unto others yet doubtless I am to you for the seal of mine apostleship are you in the Lord what is apostle Paul saying here in a nutshell you are our epistle written and read of men there was a gospel he was preaching and if you want to doubt whether God called him or not he said look at those who believed the evidence of a true ministry is not the number of people that gather in your church it is the number of people that live a life that is worthy of the gospel. No matter what ministry you have, pastors all over the world, we are not going to give account of the number of members of our church. We are going to give account of the people that through your ministry they were confirmed they were sealed they were born again they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost what is the evidence that they have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost the life will be transformed evidently people will see you and they will see Christ in you evidently people you are not the one that will carry sign board and put in your shop to show that you are a Christian it is even more than the type of dress you wear it's more than not wearing trousers sister it's more than not wearing a ring or no painting because that sister yesterday throughout this year she was not putting on a ring and coming to church but she was waiting for the opportunity to show who she was Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told some ministers in my church during the week, I think on Thursday, I told them, I said, look, look, if you want a true testimony of yourself as a minister of God, I say, it is not at the pulpit. Church, it's not at the pulpit. Why I'm preaching there, you'll be seen at the guy. This guy is a man of God. If it is the pulpit you are using to judge me, you will miss it. Don't judge anybody in the church. Amen. Because I preach here, gang, 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 gang. One sister say, uh, ask question. He says she has been praying that she will marry a man like me. And I told her, I say do you know me anywhere before have you interacted with me before you only see me talking here da, 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 da. see an animal gave a correct prophecy to Balaam I don't know whether you understand me or not eh? 
after he gave the prophecy to Balaam, perfectly an animal was speaking in tongue. After that, what happened? He went back to eating his grass. Amen. So I told the sister, I said, before you can rightly say you want to marry a man like me, go and find out about me from my wife, what she's going through. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now that's the truth. There are pastors that their wives cannot sit down in the church when they are preaching. When they finish preaching, finish after service, the woman will go and hold him. Come, Johnny. This one way they preach. Are you not a hypocrite? That's the way they talk. If you don't take that, I will open you up. And the man is not repenting. You say, You, this woman, you are a devil. Now, church, listen. I told those ministers, I said, The first person that will give the testimony that you are a Christian is your wife. It's your wife. Hallelujah. It's your wife. Until, unless your wife can stand and say, I believe that my husband is a Christian, whether you're a minister or a, a church member, the first person to give that is your wife. In the church here, you can't know who I am. You can only judge me by my doctrine, but you can't judge my life from what I preach. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You have to be close, so close, so close. Secondly, the other people that can testify that you're a Christian are people who every day are working with you. In your office, in your marketplace, where you are every day, your classmates in the school, they are the ones that can testify whether you're a hypocrite or you are truly a Christian. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's true. What is your testimony? What is your testimony, bride assembly? If the rapture strikes now, who can beat his chest and say, on the basis of my faith that I am sure has been honored from above, I am sealed. I know if the rapture strikes now, I will go. But you know why I am preaching this message? One, to let you know what the true confirmation is and stop being deceived by all these denominational doctrines. And secondly, for somebody to see a reason to open your heart. So that all this faith that you have been confessing all these years, God can honor it. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop this hypocrisy. Stop the spirit of religion. Religion, not religion come to church, look like a holy person, in your privacy, you are worse than a devil. Everybody see you, sister, you don't wear a ring. You don't wear trousers. All your cloth, they sweep ground, where they travel, they go. But when they come close to you, you are worse than electric fish. Who are you deceiving? Jesus Christ called those Pharisees. He said, you whited sepulchre. He said, you whited sepulchre. You know what the whited sepulchre is? A grave. Dead men's bones are there. But it is beautified outside with marble. And flower. Beautiful flower. But open that marble, it is smelly inside. Dead bones are there. Rotten. God looks beyond your outward appearance and goes inside. The outward one is to complement only what is inside. The real you is not your outward appearance. The real you is who you are inside that is reflected outside. How many people want that seal? Let the choir sing him 129 for me. 
Let's close on that. Have you been baptized into the body? In Acts chapter 19. Apostle Paul asked those 12 men from Ephesus. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Is there anybody here? You have not yet been baptized correctly. And you want to baptize today? Do we have water there? No water today? Come on Tuesday. On Tuesday here we shall baptize you. Can we hear you sing it please? Oh, 
as you go now. Because I told you it's the heart. It's the heart. Amen. See, see, Abraham, listen, it was not because he was sinless, that's why God called him. Eh -eh. Eh -eh. Just as I am without one just as you are, just as you are, just as you are, just, just acknowledge that you are a wretched sinner. But I'm a sinner, but I want to go to heaven. I, I, want, I, I want to be where Jesus Christ is. Let's bow down our heads. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, Sister Favor from Lafayette, can you see me in the office? God bless you.